In this day and age, web applications are becoming more and more powerful. And well, your traditional web programming languages need to sort of evolve to catch up. Today, we're going to look at one of the features that were basically created out of this need, and that is WebSockets. After we understand the fundamentals of WebSockets, we will make use of it to build a very simple chat application. You're watching another Random Wednesday episode on 0612TV. Hello and welcome back to another Random Wednesday episode. Now, just to start off with a little bit of history, WebSockets were first conceptualized in 2008 and it was actually used to fill in a placeholder in the HTML5 definition which was written in 2004. WebSocket technology started appearing in browsers in 2009 and what this means is it is fairly young technology. I mean, it's still about 8-9 to nine years, you know, depending on when you're watching this. But compared to the rest of web technology which can be decades old, it is fairly young in comparison. Of course, then the question is why does it even exist in the first place? And the simple answer is that it's there to augment our existing, well, web protocols. And there is a reason for this. You see, HTTP, which is the protocol used to transmit web pages and similar content to your browser, actually has two, well, I could call them features, I could call them limitations. And that is HTTP is both stateless and connectionless. What stateless means is that each connection is treated as a brand new connection, the protocol doesn't actually remember that you've connected before, and it's not able to identify you, you know, to remember the previous things you've done. This is there to make things a little bit easier to manage because then it doesn't need to hold state information on disk. The protocol is also connectionless, and what this means is by rights, every time you want a piece of resource from a server, you connect request that one resource, and then you disconnect immediately. What this means is when you try to load, say, a web page, the page itself, right, is one resource, so you make one connection, and every single, you know, external resource on that page all require their own requests, their own special connections to retrieve that particular resource. Now, this has been iterated upon because modern-day web servers will keep a connection open, albeit for just a short period of time, so that if you want to actually request you know, multiple items, say when you're loading a page, you can do it all in one connection. However, these two properties of HTTP in general still prevents certain applications from working properly. That is, any connection that requires you to have a constantly open and identifiable connection to a server in which well, you can send and retrieve information at any point of time, doesn't quite work with HTTP. I mean, if you want, you could actually, you know, constantly poll the server for information, but that creates a lot of traffic, and that makes things, well, pretty difficult for the server to handle, especially when many clients are connected. To work around these issues, we have WebSockets. WebSockets basically refer to one connection between you know, a client and a server, and that connection stays open constantly until it's explicitly closed, so that, well, both parties can actually exchange messages with each other. That is basically WebSockets in a nutshell, and when we move on to build our chat application, you will see just how convenient that makes things. The cool thing about WebSockets is that it really allows you to transmit anything, even though you know, most of the functions involve working with text, you can actually well, represent something as a JSON string and then send a whole bunch of information through that way. You can even send images. As long as you can encode things as text, well, WebSockets will work for you. So yeah, with that said, let's actually try and build a very simple chat client. So obviously, this is going to be a client and server architecture. Now, the server itself is going to be written in Node.js, so if you want to follow along with this, you will need to download Node, as well as to use npm to install the WebSockets library. Now, do know that there are two WebSockets libraries with very similar names, but they're not the same. So this is WebSockets with an S at the end. So the code itself is fairly simple. We begin by importing the WebSockets library that we just downloaded, 
and then we create our server. Space out our code a little bit and we ask our server to listen on a particular port. This in fact is enough to create a working WebSocket server, even though, well, it's going to be kind of unresponsive because we haven't taught it what to do. So let's go ahead and actually do that. The first event we need to listen to is connection. And this happens, of course, when a client connects to our server. So when there is a connection, we want to run this function. That's what this syntax means. Now, one thing is passed to this function, and that is a handle to the client itself. This is important, of course, because in order to handle this event properly, we need to be able to access the client that has just connected. There are only really two things this client can do to us that we need to handle, and that is firstly, if it sends us a message, and when the connection is actually closed. So these two are also callback functions hiding within, well, our connection function. So let's think about what we need to do when we receive a message from a client. Of course, we're going to have to actually send out this message to everyone else. What this means is we need to have some notion of, well, all the other clients. And as a result, we actually need to add something to this statement. To do this, we create a list and this will hold all the clients that have ever connected. And in order to actually populate this list, well, whenever a client connects, we push it onto the list, like so. That means when a message is received, we have a whole list of clients that we can now send a message to. And here's how we can do that. We simply use a for loop to loop through the list of clients. For each client C, we send a message that has been received here to them. So yeah, that's essentially all we're doing. We're taking a message and passing it through to everyone else. That's basically all we have to do. So let's handle the other condition. And that is when a client disconnects. Really, the only thing we need to do is to remove it from the list. So we go into the list and look for the index of the current item. That is, of course, its position within the list itself. This function actually gives us negative one if it cannot be found. So we put this if statement here, you know, just to be sure. If the index is not negative one, in other words, if, you know, this can be found in the list, we simply cut it out using a function called splice. So we remove that one item from the list and that's it. We have successfully removed the clients from the list. This is in fact our entire server code. It is this simple. Now I've added one extra line here and that is whenever a client connects, we just send a welcome message to them. So this one is completely optional, but it allows us to debug our code. This then allows us to move on to the client itself. Now our client is of course a web page, which is why we must start with our, you know, usual HTML and body tags. Let's form the contents of the page first. We give it a title, we build a diff, and this is basically our chat window. And what this means is, you know, whatever messages we receive go into this div. We of course also need a message box, you know, for a user to type whatever message they want. That's it for the page. Let's move on to the code itself. We use a callback function for when the page is loaded. And what that means is this function will run when the page loads. So when the page loads, of course, we need to connect to our WebSocket server. So the syntax for this is extremely simple. We just say new WebSocket and give it the address and port. This address just means, you know, my local machine. And this is the port number we have specified previously on the server. This alone is enough to get our web page to connect to our backend. We store the handle to the socket in a variable so that, well, later on when we want to send messages, we can. So at this point, there are really only two things we need to take care of. And that is when we receive a message from the server and when we try to, well, send a message via our clients. So to make things look a little bit neater, I have split these two things out into their own functions. All we need to do now is to link these two functions, this one to the socket and this one to the text box on the page. And we do it like this. When a message is received from the socket, we tell them to handle it using this function. We grab the message box from the page and we say that when you know a key press is detected on the message box itself, we call this function. So yeah, these linkages are ready. All we have to do now is to implement them and everything will work as we expect. Firstly, how do we handle a message? Now, there are a couple of steps here, but the important thing to note is that, well, we are actually creating an element 
and assigning the data from the message to it. And then we are of course adding it to our screen. In particular, we are adding it to the chat window. The element is a div and it has the class name entry. And we're doing this so that later on we can easily apply styles, you know, for it to look the way we want it to look. So yeah, this is just, you know, code to make the text appear on screen. And this is sort of the most important part that's doing that. How do we handle a key press? Well, we simply check to see if the user has pressed the enter key. If they have, we read out the text from the text box and well, we remove the text from the text box. You know, that's just how chat clients work. And then at the end, we take the text that has been extracted and send it to the socket. This is basically our entire client. Now, I've added a few lines. This one is just so that it appears properly on mobile. Well, we'll talk about that later. I've also created a simple style sheet so that, you know, things look a little bit better. I'm not going to elaborate upon the style sheet here, but well, the code will be downloadable in a video description so you can take a look at how it's actually set up there. Other than that, this basically forms our entire client. And yeah, this is our full chat service, basically ready to go. With just this, when I fire up the server using Node, I can then actually, well, immediately, you know, write in my text field and then see the results come back. Notice that whatever I send gets broadcast to all clients, no matter how many there are. And that is as simple as it gets. That's how easy it is to make use of WebSockets. So yeah, all the code I've written here is available for download. Do look at the video description, right? You will find a link there. Of course, as mentioned, this is an extremely simplified implementation of, you know, a little chat engine. I mean, for one, you don't even identify the clients, right? Anyone can write anything, it just shows up there. So if you are building a chat client, you might want to have a little login process. In addition to this, really, the application doesn't even show the message you sent directly. Instead, it relies on the server to send that message back to you before it gets displayed. This, in conjunction with what I've previously mentioned, is the reason why everyone's messages look the same, even though Ideally, messages sent by you should be highlighted in a different color, for example. There is also another issue that is not immediately obvious, and that is closing a connection. When you explicitly, you know, disconnect from the server, on a server side, the event is fired, and you can actually, you know, handle it accordingly. But the problem is, it is also possible for you to time out, and this happens perhaps when your internet goes down, perhaps, you know, your browser crashes, it doesn't have a chance to actually say, hey, I want to disconnect. What this means is that events on the server side will not fire. That means your server still needs to find some way to figure out that, you know, you're actually not there anymore. So here's how we can fix all three of these problems. And that is, you just need to have a, you know, slightly more complex messaging protocol, perhaps using something like JSON. To identify your clients, Right, you could have a different kind of message that is for username transmission. To make sure your clients are still there, you may be able to occasionally ping your clients, right, or allow them to transmit a little heartbeat back to the server, so you know they're still there. In both these cases, if either one of them fail, it could indicate that, you know, either the web browser is no longer responding, or they are completely disconnected. And then you can, you know, probably manually disconnect them from the server side. And finally, there is still one glaring flaw to this entire setup, and that is the fact that clients actually need to have, you know, an HTML file that they run. This makes it basically impossible to deploy. So, well, an alternative is to add that feature to the server itself. Now, I've actually written a version of the server that does this, but I don't really have the time to fully explain it. The idea is, not only does this new server identify itself as you know, a WebSocket server, it also becomes an HTTP server, able to serve up web pages. When you connect to it, it serves you the client page, and then the client page connects back to the server via WebSockets. Now, when I have things set up this way, I can even have multiple devices working together in the chat. So yeah, as you can see in this example, I have both my phone and my browser running, and I can actually send messages between the two of them. Again, this file will be in the download in a video description, 
but to get it to work, you will actually have to change the constant so that it indicates the IP address of the actual computer on which the server is running on. That is needed because an external device needs to know what to connect to. But yeah, that's how simple WebSockets are. That's how easy it is to set up, you know, some kind of application with full interactivity over WebSockets. So yeah, on that note, let us wrap up this Random Wednesday episode. I hope you gained some insight today. You know, if you have been coding along, I hope you had fun with this little exercise. But yeah, that's it. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, you're watching 0612 TV on nerdfirst.net. Thank you very much for watching. If you like my work and are feeling generous, you can shoot me a one-time donation on PayPal or sign up for a recurring one on Patreon. Of course, you can simply like, comment and subscribe. You know the deal. For more videos, links to my channel and a related playlist are on screen. Thank you for your support.